Hi everybody, this is Rosa Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read The Invisible Garden by Dorothy Suture, Suture I do believe is Suture. Um, this book is absolutely incredible, but unfortunately it was terribly, terribly short. And as somebody who loves the garden, I thought that it was um, just resplendently written. And right from the very beginning, you're just, you're immediately drawn to this woman who comes into Vermont and she's not used to this rustic bucolic setting. She comes from New York so this is completely totally out of her comfort zone and <clears throat> she um, learns how to garden and learns how to tend to trees and whatnot and it's actually really quite uh, informative as well as just being a work of fiction. And I just, I understand this on a very deep and personal level because um, when I was young, and I, I still want my own house, and I, I will eventually, it's just a matter of time, but um, I adore gardening. It's just, there's something about the, the feel of the dirt in your hands as you work it and just putting something living in the ground and keeping it thriving in that smell that oh so incredible delightful fantastic smell of loam that i wish that they could make into a candle i would probably be the one person that would buy it but <laughs> it just is just so refreshing and i don't know why but the, the scent of loam is very invigorating to me i know for some it's like oh i don't like that smell but i'm like oh I need to go out and garden. <laughs> I'm just one of those people. I just, I gotta get my hands dirty. But I just, I love it. I love landscaping. I learned that I was really good at landscaping when I decided to join Team Depot. And I just, I get so much, um, <clears throat> so much of a thrill and just a, a sense of accomplishment out of, um, doing landscaping. I, I guess it's just something I have always liked to do and I just never really realized how excellent I was at it but this is a, a story about um, finding oneself and taking care of something beyond oneself and coming to grips with um, new situation and i think we could all this is very relatable i think anybody could come into reading this book and not know anything about gardening and still enjoy it because it's at, at its core it's a story it's a fish out of water story basically and um i thought it was so woefully short but it's really inspired me to write my own story because I've got not a story but it's a script and it'll be a rom-com but it's about this man who has has this absolutely exquisite rose garden that he tends to himself without any help and he does it all by himself it is huge and he's just uh he is an expert when it comes to roses and other plants but mainly mainly roses uh but that's pretty much all I have to say about The Invisible Garden. And I'll be using some quotes uh, to start it off. So that's, that's probably so very apropos that I found this book in the little um, free library. I actually found this one over at Tulip Trestle. And um, I want to give a small spoiler. The, the blue house itself, that's, that's a little bit of a, a tease. And I'm not going to say why, but one can probably consider um, the house itself being a character, <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned. The house and, of course, the, the garden. Um, but, yeah, I, d I just thought that her methodology of writing was just so utterly um, outstanding that I got a lot of encouragement from that because I just started publishing again because I got my laptop and uh, I'm doing short stories right now but I'm hoping I will actually write a book in the near future and I've got a whole bunch of cryptid stories that I'm going to make into one novel and I will also be writing a survival guide and this is going to be hmm, 
I'm just going to take some time to get to where I want to be, but thus far, that's all I'm going to say. So until next time, live on prosper. Ciao, tutti.